Ooh, y'all going in. The one I committed to or a situation. <laughs> like, what are you talking about? So people have said, like, you got to be out there. You got to be dating. For me, that's not the case because my assignment is different. How do you prefer to meet men? Like, have you tried online dating or speed dating or anything like that? <laughs> Even my pastor told me, he was like, get online. I'm like. Welcome to today's episode of Relationship Talk with the Guests. Most of us have seen the hit TV series, Sex and the City, from the late 90s and early 2000s. That's what I think of when I meet a single person and they say they live in a city life. That show showed dating in the city from four different perspectives. What I don't remember seeing was dating in the city as a Christian woman. Today, we're going to get that perspective. Joining us all the way from Chicago, Illinois, is attorney, teacher, premier transformational coach, speaker, and leader, digital creator, content creator, and entrepreneur, Jamila Moore. Before we dive in, if you haven't already subscribed to our channel, click the subscribe button so you won't miss the new content. What are you waiting for? You've been coming in here watching anyway. Go ahead and subscribe. So Jamila, I'm so excited about this conversation. It's so past due. Like, I really feel like that. So let's start out with some context for the One Vision family that's tuning in. So you're a career woman and entrepreneur making boss moves. What is your end goal relationally? And by that, I mean, do you want to be married? Do you want kids? Are you open to any other long-term arrangements or non-traditional relationships? Yeah, just jump right in. I'm right in. I'm telling you, full 10 toes. <laughs> so the journey to getting here, um, yes, I will be married one day. Yes, I will have kids. Um, I think that that's beyond me, right? Um, and so I am a faith-based woman. And so there are just things that I know God has set forth for my life. Um Am I open to things that are not designed in a way in which the creator designed them? I'm not. Okay. Um, and for that reason, it has kind of shaped the way that I've done relationships. And so like people have said, like, you got to be out there. You got to be dating. For me, that's not the case because my assignment is different. Mm -hmm. And so like, I think when you're taking advice and walking out your path and your season of singleness and has to be also based upon your assignment and what you're called to do. I agree. All right. All right well, I'm going to ask you one then. When was your last relationship? Woo, y'all going in. The one I committed to or a situation? <laughs> like, what you talking about? So you can give us a little bit of both. If one was a super commitment and right. one was a little situation, situation mm -hmm. like <laughs> um so the last situation um was in 2021 okay and what are we in 24 now 24 and so yep yeah. um one of the things that i was talking to one of my friends about is like i end up on a fast and poof things mm. begin to obliterate mm. Mm. and i'm not fasting about the man Right. right. I'm literally just fasting because in 2016, I learned of like, you know, the power of fasting and things of that nature. And so yes. at that point, I started to do two fasts per year. Mm. But at that point that I started to see, I, I said, why don't none of my like situationships and things work out? Like what was going on here? Mm -hmm. And it was just like, you pray and you fast. And so for me, I had to balance being in the streets in a sense, because I don't have to be single. Mm -hmm. like, I don't have to be. Right. And one yeah. Saturday night, I was in my bedroom and I was just like, am I seriously in the house right now? <laughs> I felt like the Holy Spirit say to me, like, I have purpose for this time for you. Mm -hmm. And there's something out there for you, but like, delays distractions and demonic strongholds mm -hmm. gotcha so what are some things you learned about yourself in mm -hmm. that situation 
You can't. Okay. That ain't one of your words. <laughs> that ain't one of my words. I already know how to say it. <laughs> you know, to be honest, don't be listening to people. So a mm. part of my dating history is people have convinced me to kind of like, this is a good thing. This is this, this is that. <laughs> and yeah. one we thing, that. yeah, that's one thing that I learned is like, there's a conviction from within that lets me know things about dating that I can look to the outside for information about. And I think there's been a process of God teaching me to trust him and trust myself. Correct. Um, I think the other, because with that piece, it just, it just got spiraled into a thing because one of the reasons why I probably have some sort of like reservation around dating people is because I have 10, like 10 or more siblings, right? Because the siblings got siblings and all that. And it's something about us, they gonna like and love us. And so it's hard to get the man to understand if they are not in a place of like discernment that I'm not their wife. Mm-hmm. And so then the pull apart of like the being just remaining friends doesn't work for them in that way. Mm-hmm. Um, and so that's another thing that I learned. Um, and the other piece is just um, really watching character and values more than looking at somebody's resume and saying like, oh, they're a career person. I'm a career person. Yeah. They're ambitious. I'm ambitious. They're in church. I'm in, huh, huh. <laughs> no. Because that even comes down to um watching character and behavior more so than what they say right. they mm-hmm. are, like who right. they tell you they are, who right. they present themselves to be. Because right. ooh, those representatives can show up and stay around for a while <laughs> yeah. before you're able to see through mm-hmm. the what they've trained themselves to present. Right. So mm-hmm. that's that's good stuff. And you you mentioned like people hooking you up. How do you prefer to meet men? Like, have you tried online dating or speed dating or anything like that? Yeah, I feel like I've tried it all. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I, you, you know, it is what right. it is. Uh-huh. Um, and even my pastor told me, he was like, get online. I'm like, literally. And it was crazy because it was Christmas when he told me this. And I remember 2020 and Christmas, it was like, he not on there. So like, get off of there. Mm -hmm. Um, And so I used to meet people going out. um, I met people on airplanes, all the things. And sometimes I'd be like, well, God, just, you know, I know this ain't the one. (laughs) But God, we could just be friends. Mm -hmm. It's just like, he will be like, no, Mm -hmm. like, no. And I'll be like, but why? And like, I think I would say to every single, like, really get clear on your identity Mm -hmm. because I said to myself I two weeks ago I said I don't know who I am but based on the level of like warfare that I experience the level of pruning that I experience it gotta be something that I can't even imagine because even like now one of the things is I've shifted to a whole new state and part of me being in this state is just like to strip me of things from the past. Gotcha. And I, like I've been being stripped for years. <laughs> well, if God is preparing you, you got to think yes. of, and I don't want to misquote, but there is a quote and it's like, uh, bad company corrupts good character or something Correct. like that. that so if, cool. if God knows that he is, um, getting you ready, preparing you for the next season. And he knows that if you're friends with this person, he knows things about this person that you are asking to be friends with. And he Mm -hmm. knows that that is going to introduce corruption into Mm -hmm. your life Mm -hmm. that does not align with your purpose. Yes. And so he was like, I, you pray and fast for protection. Mm -hmm. I'm going to give it to you. I'm protecting you from you in this situation. (laughs) Yes. Of the you that you would be <laughs> if I let this man corrupt your character. Yes. And he can do it because yes. he's smelling mighty good, baby. <laughs> and so he's, you know, a little tall, a little tall, always work. <laughs> uh-huh. right. So it's like, can't you just let us go to the book? No, I can't. Because you prayed and you fasted so that I would protect you in this season. And that's what I'm going to do. Mm-hmm. So no, you can't. 
So I love that about God. He gonna give you what you ask for, even when you don't want it. Yes. So speaking of that pruning process you just described, what has been the most challenging part of it? Yeah, I think just some of the isolation mm. um, and what it means to be set apart. Right. But if I think about like purpose, it makes me think about when we have kids and when they're special. And now I have this understanding, like for parents looking to see which of their kids is really special and really set apart, could be mm-hmm. all of them. And then teaching them how to manage um, being, you know, set apart and dealing with the emotions of that, right? right. Um, because I know God has a plan for me. So I am a dreamer um and walk with like so i have seen so many of my dreams come true oh. right and so i can literally tell from my dreams where my life is going next so it's not one of those things where um i feel like singles can be in a place where i don't think i'm ever going to get married i just know that there's an appointed time Mm-hmm. And so me trying to be in a place of, am I stewarding and doing well with today and staying out of God's business? Because I'll be in his business. Right. Like, hey, when is this happening? What is going on here? X, right. B. I want to speak to what you said, because it's so ironic that we, when we're in a situation, we absolutely can't see beyond it for you to list the area, um, the one of the most challenging things would be isolation. And you want to be a wife and mother. And what I ask for more than anything as a wife and mother is isolation. Mm. Mm. Because, you know, mm. and your season is challenging for you, mm. but it's a gift of mm. the season. Mm. So your gifting like is a challenge because he asked me like Mother's Day is coming up and he's like, what do you want for Mother's Day? <laughs> and I was like, to not be a mother for the day. Like it's I want Mother's you to day. take my kids away from me <laughs> and all That's three of y'all get away and leave me alone. Yeah, Make one. sure I got some food yes. and nobody asked me for nothing. Yeah. Like I want to be by myself. Yes. And so, um, and that is the challenge in the season that you're in. Mm-hmm. So I think we're no matter what season we're in, finding the gift that's given to us and figure out how God wants to use it then. So he's if you are isolated, then mm-hmm. you're isolated for a reason. Mm-hmm. There's something beautiful that he is birthing out of the mm-hmm. isolation. Mm-hmm. So if you're busy and you're working and you're writing and you're producing content, like you are exactly where he wants you to be. Because there will come a time when that's all you ever want. There's <laughs> some people to leave you alone. <laughs> ah, you are speaking the truth. And I think so I think I get that most of the time, right? Mm-hmm. Um, in my own life, I am recognizing that he's pulling he he's pulling it out even more. Mm-hmm. So it comes with a level and maybe I should have said the grief Mm. that I'm dealing with Mm. because loss of friendships, loss of um, community in terms of like locale. Mm -hmm. Um, And one of the things that I truly believe that he's teaching me or he's putting in me is to make me want to love and honor the family that he's going to give me. Because if I'm honest, based on what I've seen in marriage, I would be like, y'all getting on my nerves. Mm. <laughs> right. <laughs> you know, because like, you didn't get to sleep in the 11.30. Like, <laughs> I definitely did. Came in there and woke you up. And it's like, I'm going to make you appreciate the blessing because with the way that I've been wired, mm-hmm. because a lot of times, you know, Beyonce and them sung all the women independent like we weren't built to be that way right Mm -hmm. we were built to add value and to do different things but to be your own provider protector and all those different things that wasn't God's design and Mm -hmm. if he's allowed me to live in that role for 30 something years and I believe it was a protection mechanism because coming up from the streets of LA 
the fact that like I'm not a gangbanger's baby mama is a blessing. Right. Yes. yes. <laughs> right. It like, is. Like people don't like in my family, they don't make it out of high school, hmm. out of like, their t- early twenties without being somebody's baby mama that's like a gangbanger. And it's like right. it's no shade to that, but that's the principality that's at work and where from where I come from. Right. You so, beat the odds. Yeah. Mm-hmm. For a purpose. Mm -hmm. So keeping purpose in the forefront, I think is super important. Yes. It was like, I talked to one of my coaches one time, um, because this is my second marriage and I was married before and I was super young. I was 23. And she (laughs) said, why are you trying to get married right now? (laughs) And I was like, you know, I can't wait to wake up to him and, you know, cook his breakfast and do you know, these things. And I said, why, why don't you like being married? And she said, because I have to wake up to him and I have to get up and cook his breakfast. breakfast. <laughs> and like all this stuff that you are so excited about is going to last two seconds. And so <sighs> um, just purpose, like seasonal purpose, like ah, it's beautiful. And I'm glad that you are taking full advantage of that part. Are you aware of the areas that you need to improve in relationally while you wait? Oh, absolutely. Mm. <laughs> okay. I said that with no hesitation. So, yeah, so if you are aware, see so that awareness is like the first step. So mm-hmm. what does that work look like for you? And how did you grow to a place where you're able to even identify those areas? And I'm asking on this platform because so many people need help with the process. Of identifying. Yeah, yeah. I think one, I would petition for people to try and have long seasons of singleness. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Because I think if you steward that season well, you will be more prepared for the next season. Mm-hmm. And if you sit in that season and not be disgruntled, you can tap into the purpose of that season and really get to know yourself. So in 2016, I don't really, so people have convinced me to date people and stuff like that. So if I like you, like you did something if I really like you on my own. And there's probably only been like in my life, three men that I've liked from like my perspective, right? Um, Meaning, like, I was initially attracted to them versus growing into attraction. Right. And um, one of those, that did, it didn't work out. And I was just like, wait a minute. Mm-hmm. Wait a doggone minute. Why right. did it work out? And so, one, I had to identify that I wasn't really open, right? And um, I was living at a place where I was closed off. Mm-hmm. And if you're going into something where you are supposed to be naked, mm. right? You can't, you have to learn how to be naked. And so in 2016, I read um, Ayala Van Zandt's piece from the broken pieces. From mm. there, I read Sarah Jakes Roberts, don't settle for safe. And mm. it just, and that, that coupled with the casting mm-hmm. started to just break stuff off of me. Right. Mm. Um, and then I was like, okay, so it built up a newer level of self-awareness. Uh-huh. Um, it built up a stronger relationship with God because I don't go to, or whenever I'm dating a man, I don't just assume that this is my husband just because of X, Y, and Z. Pray to God. And I say, is this the man that you have for me? Show me, if not, give me the strength, courage, and whatever to walk away from it, Right. And I think that is something that came from me to understand that like, two, no matter what's happening here, this is God's son and I have to steward him well Mm -hmm. because my stewardship of him determines how he's going to show up for the next woman. Mm -hmm. Um, So that's another thing that came out of it. And I think the other piece is like really just leaning into the fact that like I get to have this time because one day I'm not going to have this time right like most of my friends now are married with kids um and I know they would trade pieces with me (laughs) Um, a little freedom a little freedom (laughs) and but I also it taught me to like during a season just getting to observe 
like being able to understand and glean the man's vision and seeing if it's something that I could even submit to. Right. That part. Because at some point I had a really like love hate relationship with marriage. Like I wanted it, but there was a fear of it because of like, I didn't want this. I didn't want this. I didn't want this. Mm -hmm. And God had to yoke me up and say, you haven't really been presented and nurtured around healthy marriages. And so he's intentional because now I like get to talk to the likes of you. I get to talk to the likes of the Connors. I get to talk to the likes of the Wilsons. And now it's like, taking the fear off of it with me because mm-hmm. I was just like every Christmas I'm like whoop I ain't got to be in there to worry about what he gonna eat I'm gonna eat my life <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> and it's just like I just didn't design you this way well that's what patience is yes. like people think that patience is just waiting but if you really look patience up it's your attitude, attitude. while waiting mm. so you can spin it like while you're in waiting, how instead of saying, you know, I just sit over here and be patient. Like, <laughs> <That's not> patience. <laughs> <laughs> like I have the gift of singleness. I have the opportunity to do whatever I want right now. Mm-hmm. Beautiful. Love every bit of it. So dating world, what check boxes would a man have to check for you just to agree with a date with him? Ooh, to agree with a date. Yes. Just to get you to know, a date. Some of these men be tricky though, Ed. Like, okay. Snatch my phone out. And I was just like, hey, sir, you can't be doing that. Uh, so, they did what? They like snatched my phone out of my hand. I was like, pretending to put that number in. And sh- Chicago, a different ball. Oh, game. they aggressive, aggressive, huh? <laughs> <laughs> like, I was going to, like, give me this. And da 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 da. Yeah, I got to have you, like, and. Yeah, but um, from oh, my that is perspective, <laughs> <laughs> smooth, devil now, they don't even give you the hey, shorty, they don't even give you that. <laughs> man, 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 uh, I have come across some interesting stuff in my lifetime. Okay, but um, one, you have to be a man after God's own heart. Mm-hmm. Um, I think some of the things that have been pauses for me when I have been dating, I was like, they can't cover me. In prayer. Like that, that's important for me. Um, the other piece is you have to have a growth mind. Mm -hmm. Um, you have to be have some ambition in whatever it is. Um, and I think that um you have to be flexible. And so a lot of times I go into things like just genuinely wanting to get to know people. I'm just assessing like what values do they have and what character is present um, and seeing how they treat other people. I remember um, one time this guy I was dating, he was like, he did something to his ex-girlfriend. I was like, that was really vindictive. He was like, you're calling me vindictive. I'm like, you purposely did this to this woman. (laughs) Because you felt like she hurt you. Like, that's vindictive. Definition. It was like, when I started to pull away, that vindictiveness came out. Mm. And so, like, um, just looking to see, like, where his strengths and weaknesses are and if I can handle the weaknesses. But to go on the first date, though, how do you see all of that? That's what I'm saying. What gets a yes? What do they have to show you? upon hello because you won't know all of these things like Tools. what'll get you to say yes i'll go that's what are those question. checks boxes um because i'm sure you meet some people and you're like no no <laughs> <laughs> so what do, i feel like <laughs> listen y'all the coaches so let's just let's just have a moment here we, let's, can, let's, we can do that back and have a moment let's do it <laughs> like part of it is men try and infiltrate me mm. in a friendship world before mm-hmm. they ask me out okay and it would only be like the aggressive men that like i mentioned or like men out on the street that'll be like or that i just run into 
that could possibly get me out on a first date without me having no interactions with them. Okay. Um, but typically it's just, I ask a lot of questions and probably have like some phone dates. Um, and I think I'm open to like hanging out with people. And so like, if I could assess that you have good character in a sense, um, is the best way that I can. Um, if I'm somewhat attracted to you, um, yeah, uh, but some people will badger you into some things sometimes, or maybe I'm just like a sucker. But I really love that you have, no, if first date is square one, then you have a probationary period of zero where you like, no, we need to talk on the phone a little bit first before I decide if I, if I want to go out. And I think that's big and people mm -hmm. should do that. Right. Like just because you meet someone at a gas station and they're attractive does not mean that the next weekend that you guys need to be out somewhere. Mm -hmm. Um, I, I had a friend in college who met someone like that and he murdered her mm -hmm. and he murdered like another, and I, it, it hits home for me because I was out in the mall when they met the same day they met and she introduced me introduced. to him mm -hmm. and I met him and like she she felt comfortable with him and took him back to her apartment and he killed her mm -hmm. and he had also killed another person another woman two days prior and so I'm huge so I was really happy to hear you say that you needed a few phone dates first because mm -hmm. we live in a world where you know evil is you know, rapping right now. And so I think it's safe emotionally, physically, like all of the above to have conversations with people yes. before they know where you live, before mm -hmm. you are out with them anywhere. Mm -hmm. um, because you can discern some of that over the phone. You mm -hmm. can X out some people if you will invest time into Correct. the process okay. and you're not so eager to get out with them because of the way they look or something that they present. So I love that you even said that. So I want to talk about this craze that we've been seeing on the internet and all over social media about women refusing to stay on dates depending on the restaurant that the man picked. Now you gonna shoot down Cheesecake Factory or what type of date would you expect for a first date? Are you a it's boss so, lady now, so I know you, you know, you got them standards. <laughs> it's so funny. I love the Cheesecake Factory. Okay, 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 <laughs> okay. First of all, like, give me some Korean cauliflower and now Yes, we, yes, yes. We <laughs> you know, it's so funny because I said years ago, I said if I was a man, like, who would not be taking these women off <laughs> I feel like we would be going on walks in the park before okay. I put some investment into you. Um, like really figuring out who you are. Like mm -hmm. that's what I said if I was a man. So as a woman, like I think I'm just open to getting to know people, right? And so whatever that getting to know you activity is, I personally don't really care for like the sit down dinners as a first date because it's just like. Mm -hmm. My anxiety a little high or whatever, you know. So just let's go like play basketball or go to an arcade or something like that. I love to play pool, even though I'm not good at it. But that's I love to play it. Yeah. yeah. So I'll like I out for something. So something that's like activity based would be cool. Okay. Um, and I'm not expecting you to like break the bank. Um, because I don't I don't know like where you're starting from and where you're at. Mm -hmm. Um. Because, like, I could meet you in a season where God is, like, pruning you for X, Y, and Z. So you might be budgeting different. But that doesn't mean that, like, you are not going to be X, Y, and Z later. Um, mm -hmm. One of my pastors, he because I have two pastors at New Life. Um, one of them said that he took his wife to Chili's um, on the first day. And he was like, now she's going to to Chili's. And I'm like, see? Mm -hmm. What are we going on first thing? I requested to go to Denny's. Mm -hmm. I wanted to go to Denny's. He said, I mean, I can take you somewhere better than Denny's. Do, do better. And I said, no, I want to go to Denny's. And that's how I like to date because I don't want you to feel like because you spent a couple hundred dollars that now you're entitled to my body. Mm -hmm. 
Mm-hmm. Because first of all, you're not getting it, and I don't want you to hound you me. Were, you are not. Because what you're not going to do is hound me <laughs> over this lumberjack meal. I tried. <laughs> it did. <laughs> but I'm going to set you all the way correct. And yeah. if need be, if it's a problem for you, yeah. I will give you your $12. Yeah. But it's like, as a woman, I mm-hmm. think you put yourself in a compromising mm-hmm. position demanding to go to these restaurants where they got to spend four and five hundred dollars. Right. Now, no, they are not entitled to you no. even then, mm-hmm. but you're going to put yourself in a situation where they going to hound you a little harder. Mm-hmm. And why do you need to be there? Mm-hmm. Like for what? If the goal is so that you guys can get to know each other, mm-hmm. you don't have to be in there eating steak and lobster. Mm-hmm. Go get an icy. Go get an ice cream cone, like something else. Now, I got a follow-up question, though. If, you know, you could probably go meet some some big ballers, or he might be a lawyer, he might own a business or whatever, and you know he got the means, but yet he still takes you to Chili's or... What's wrong with <laughs> I mean, even though you know he got the money, would that be a red flag? That's for both of y'all. I love it. Um, I don't think it'll be a red flag. I, I'm curious. Okay. So I want to ask questions to get my understanding. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think on the flip side for me, I am watchful of men who will take me to like X, Y, and Z, trying mm-hmm. to impress me and okay. put on for me because they hold me here. Mm-hmm. And while I have like these accomplishments and all of these things, at the end of the day, like. I am the girl that got spared gotcha. right from the streets of LA. And I have like, I mean, I, I did survive a drive by five. Like it, it, it wasn't the safest wow. area, right? Wow. Like the reality wow. of it, like we tried to do Halloween once we had to run to the houses. It was somebody with a gun on the street. Right. right. Um, so oh. I don't, my identity is not in my accomplishments. Gotcha. My identity is like just being a woman who's growing in grace. Uh-huh. And for me, I'm just too cool for that. Like, I'm too cool. First Jeez. of all, if you ask me out, just ask me what I want. Like, ask me where I want to go. If you're mm. going to plan it, like, I just might be in the mood for a taco or a fish sandwich. <laughs> like, I might not want to put on the clothes that mm-hmm. I'm going to have to put on for you to take me to that restaurant. Right. So if you're a man and you want to plan something fancy, okay but a good idea would just be like what would you like to do if i tell you the planet but i might just say take me to captain d's and then we'll go do something else play some putt putt golf or something right i'm not offended you coaching already look ask me what i want okay (laughs) a little indecisive and tell you the planet what's you I yeah. might even give you three choices. I can go here, here, or here, right. and we can hang out, and we mm-hmm. can have a good time. I mean, just give some direction to the people that you're dating, and I, I think like that it. can solve a lot. I don't care if you have millions of dollars. I don't want you to spend all the millions. I want mm-hmm. you to get me the five ninety nine special. I saw it on TV, and the commercial <laughs> got me. <laughs> they got this new Little Caesars thing that they keep stretching the cheese up here. Go get me some of that, <laughs> and then we can talk. <laughs> yes. The main thing is Keep. to have the conversation, to get to know the person, learn as much as you can, whatever that takes. I mean, mm-hmm. really. So, you know, we've talked about this before. You know, when we coach singles, mm-hmm. we help them work through creating a list of non-negotiables yes. so that they don't waste time dating people without a core foundation that they need to sustain a happy and healthy relationship. Do you have a list of non-negotiables? You know, I've been working on my list of non-negotiables. And I think like as I'm growing and evolving, mm-hmm. um, it continues to grow and evolve. So one is like, you know, the God factor. Mm-hmm. Um, two, uh if there is like you gotta have some balance and willingness to show up mm-hmm. in your life. Cause like, you know, people may want like X, Y, and Z, but if um, X, Y, and Z that's making millions or hundreds of thousands can't never show up. What's the point of having X, Y, and Z, right? Right. Um, and another piece is like someone that is working towards becoming a better version of themselves. Mm-hmm. Because from what I understand, in marriage, you just gotta continue growing together, right? Mm-hmm. Um, so I have to just, you know, see that you are willing to grow. 
Um, and I would want to see if there is some like value alignment um, around like, you know, how we possibly do finances and um, can you take feedback? Like, Ooh, I'm not going to do good. it. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm not going to say it crazy, but I want to make sure that if I ever say something to you, you can be a safe space and be able to take it back and like work with it, you know? With the understanding that I love you. Mm -hmm. So if I'm telling you this, I'm not telling you this to hurt you. Mm -hmm. Like I need you to be better so we can be better. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Listen to me. Yeah. That's big. That's big. All right. We often talk about how visual men are. Mm -hmm. well, we by ourselves. It ain't just us. <laughs> You women, you have a type too. So how important is physical attraction to you? Real talk now. Real talk, you know. So uh, what is it? R.A. Vernon, he has the, I think the 10 rules of dating. Mm -hmm. And I was like, oh, this is it. Um, I have to be attracted to you. Mm -hmm. I want to be able to like, like you. Right. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, think you're handsome in whatever way. And I feel like attraction for me is subjective. Okay. Like, I don't need everybody to think he's fine. I don't need to think he's fine for whatever reason. I think he's fine. But whatever he's fine is to me. Mm -hmm. um, so I think that it's important. But I also think about uh, mental attraction. And then spiritual attraction. I'm sorry, y'all. I'm just a spiritual being. So okay. <laughs> a lot of that stuff is just going to come out for me. No um, about it. So, yeah. So it's like, I look at those three things because like, I don't want to wake up to a, a dead fine person, meaning they're dead mentally, dead spiritually, but you fine. Um, and, you know, Yeah. It doesn't help if you're fine, and then we're sitting here talking, and all I see are misspelled words right across. No, the she screen. don't like fine and dumb. That's it's just like, I can, will you please stop saying that? Like, why do you say things like that? No, she has told me that she was really attracted to a guy, and she saw that he had several misspelled words on a post, and immediately dropped them. Because I was like, those aren't typos. <laughs> Like, I, can be, I know why you you wrote that because you think that's what it's supposed to say. So it's a no for me. Yeah, she that's that's her. So but here, here are the thing. Are there things that a man could do to make you overlook or the lack of attraction? Lack of attraction, yeah. Yes, they've done it in the past. <laughs> <laughs> what are those things? What are some of those things that would make you overlook? Like, I'm not really physically attracted to him, but X, Y, and Z. Yeah, I think it's like an, an attention to detail. Mm -hmm. So when I think about my love language, it used to be, so quality of time was there, but it's something now with like the acts of service. Ooh. <laughs> Oh, look at that one. Look at that one. <laughs> Flash gifts. So it's like, oh, you paid attention to X, Y, and Z. Like, man. Like, right? So then it gives me a glimpse into your character. So I feel like your character could beat out any physical attraction any day. Um, Because I could see your heart. And if I could trust your heart, you know, because out of the heart flows a myriad of things. So... I, got you. I can see that making up if you're just okay but what if you look and you're like will, will, a, will good character and thoughtfulness cover mm. do you think I think I mean I've, seen it, for me. I've seen it happen I've yeah. seen it happen right? right in so many different instances and I think about a friendship right now and I don't want to be in my butt and it's just like now she just head over heels period um because of like and i actually seen that in quite a few of my friendships um where uh like it was his character it was the fact that like he was a healthy man because we have to talk about like early on we delve in unhealthy relationships and then as women we will think that unhealthy is normal mm-hmm and so then when a healthy man does approach us, we are like, 
like, what is this? He too this, he too that. Like, no, this is actually what you were supposed to be experiencing, right. but mm-hmm. you didn't. Um, and so I think like when my friends have gotten healthy men, they overlook whatever, you know, physical thing that they thought they wanted. Um, because that's what I think is possible. That's one of the things we talk about in the course, Where's Bay? It's when we are so familiar with dysfunction, then like things that function like they should are very uncomfortable for mm-hmm. us. And mm-hmm. we push it away and we go back to what we know. Yep. Even though we know it's wrong, right. it feels so good it's because it's familiar. familiar. Mm-hmm. And so stepping outside of the box to a healthy place is where you have to get to really. So that's, that's good stuff too. I lost my stuff. <laughs> my whole question went away. No, you're right. You, you, I, I can take over. What male in your life are you closest to? Ooh, that's a good one. Mm. Um, mm. Right now, and it just, it goes and ebbs and flows. It's my neighbor down the street. Mm. Oh, really? Yep. How did, how did that form? So it's so crazy. Um... When I was moving to Chicago, I was here in August and one of my good friends, he was like, oh, I'm gonna make sure you meet this guy. He's amazing. So he walks up to me and he was like, hey, this is so-and-so. And he was like, I'm going to take you on a tour tomorrow and you're going to see Chicago and stuff like wow. that. Like, oh, wow. um, so we went <laughs> on a tour and then it turned out I ended up living five doors down from him. Really? Wow. Yeah. And so one of the ways that I've been connected here is through my church. And so like he's uh, helped me get connected with different people. And then also he's a certified life coach. So his behind was getting in my behind yesterday around some stuff. Like he was (laughs) like, how come I don't see you showing up like X, Y, and Z. Um, And so it's just one of those things where I feel like two it's the intentionality of God in preparing me for this season for my next season, um, by allowing me to, uh, have this, uh, friendship and this openness. So question. Okay. So if he were describing you to a possible suitor, what types of things do you think he would say that would make him interested? Uh, yeah. Well, uh-huh. <laughs> um, he will probably say that I'm beautiful. Um, he would say that like my mind is probably like out of this world. Like that girl, I don't even know how she come up with that stuff. <laughs> um, she's hardworking. True. Um, uh, and then like you know, I think she's just really dope like one of the things that you know a good quality that he would probably say that i have like she's easy to trust mm-hmm. mm, that is a good one That's yeah a good mm-hmm. so like you could trust i you could trust her and you, he will probably say like you know my people and how i hold my people together and so if i'm introducing you to this one is because this one is a real one mm-hmm. and i think it's gonna work well mm-hmm. so, I feel like you've prepared yourself well to be a safe place for anybody that you date. Mm -hmm. And that's really big for men, Mm -hmm. the men that I talk to, because they feel like they're in such a fight in the world. They're like, when I come home, I would like to come home to someone safe. And so Mm -hmm. I think you're doing just a phenomenal job Mm -hmm. being able to create that for the people that you're around. Cause I always feel it when I'm with you. So I, I think you're doing great. I have a, I have a, I have a question. This is dating, not dating type of question. Now you're from LA, right? I'm from and LA. You, and you're now in Chicago. Those are two big major cities. What is the scene like you feel in meeting men and people in both those two big fluctuating cities? You want me to throw another wrench in there? Please throw it. For 10 years I lived in Chicago. I mean, not Chicago, in New York. Oh, wow. Wow. So the three major my, ones. Yes. Yeah, so the bulk of my dating experience is in New York. The bulk of my lessons stems from New York. And so I think you meet high quality people. Mm. But I will say coming to Chicago, the women were like, the men in Chicago suck. 
it just ain't gonna work out. I'm like, <laughs> I got a lot of family in Chicago. So I know that's not true. I was like, okay. I was like, all right. Well, okay. Maybe you know, there's a needle in a haystack for me somewhere. Whatever. Right. Uh, so, so you know, uh, yeah. Um, I think it's different here. Um, I think the people are different in LA. There is a different type of vibe and a different type of status that people are kind of on. Mm-hmm. Um, and so it just didn't really sit well with me. So while I loved LA for like the weather, the scenery, and just being back home and being close to my friends and family, gotcha. like I didn't like it from a relational standpoint. Um mm-hmm in terms of like the people that I was used to because I was like I'm Brooklyn raised like that's how I feel um and so Chicago was giving me like that place of like different types of people um I think from like being in certain church spaces I feel like you got to look out for people who um are on the come up Mm. Like, I don't, like, they see something in you. They see, they like, oh, you might know some, or you going somewhere. Let me go on attach now. Wow. Um, so I think in Chicago, it's taking a different level of discernment. And for me, I am more conscious of my time, my purpose, and if I'm going to make an investment with you. Um, and I haven't been this way I wasn't like that in New York at all. Like someone told me at like 24, like don't get all these degrees and don't get no man. So I was like, <laughs> I mean, so I was just like, you know, figuring all the things out to make sure I got the degrees and the man. Um, and so now it's just like, um, I'm prayerful about what part of this I need to like take action on and what part do I need like God leading on? And I don't think I've ever been at a place like that before. Okay. Well, I, I love every bit of that. Did you have anything you wanted to add in? Uh, no, I, I, she answered that brilliantly. Like I, I, I the, the perspectives of the, of the city life. I've always, I'm a foodie about. and you're like in the land of food. <laughs> so it's like, you gotta connect with people just on food and you serve a God, the God of manna. Like wherever you are, when he means for you to have it, yes. like he will just appear, and you like. Right. <laughs> he, I mean, so it, don't listen to any negativity about mm-hmm. where you your city. You know what I'm saying? If God yeah. told you to go there, yes. that's where you're supposed to be. Yep. And yep. he'll he'll appear. Yep. So you have all these amazing things going on, and we're so happy that you came on to join us. Yes. Please tell our our village about all the products and services that you offer, and how people can follow you. Like, give us the the rundown. Yes. Yeah. So <laughs> if you are an entrepreneur or you are entrepreneurial, you shouldn't be doing business without me. I am your business's superpower. I am your lethal weapon where I protect and grow your profits, your brand, and your business by making sure no one's stealing your stuff through trademarks, contracts, copyrights, and compliance. And the double-edged sword, which makes me the lethal weapon, is the fact that um, I'm also a business strategist. So I'm, you can't do legal without doing business, and you can't do business without doing the law. Mm-hmm. Um and so I support people in that way. And you can find me at Jamila Moore Esquire or at I am and more on all social media. I am and more. Yes. Yeah, so okay. I A M A N D M O R E. That's what you can find me. Hey, it's bars. Bars. <laughs> she dropped them. Oh, yeah. And for your potential husband <laughs> who is watching and he wants to shoot his shot, uh-huh. where can he go to shoot it? <laughs> um, he could DM me at Jamila Moore Esquire. Jamila Moore Esquire, you heard it here first. Yep, you see her. <laughs> Thank you again for coming in, and we will chop it up. I hope you have a great day. Appreciate you. For more information about our coaching services, courses, marriage tools, events, and getaways, go to onevisionerc.com. That website again is onevisionerc.com. 
If you had a good time hanging out with us and you got something out of it, go ahead and subscribe so you won't miss the next one. Like it so we'll know you enjoyed it and share with somebody so they too can be blessed. We'll see you next time.